One of the most intriguing movements gaining popularity today is witchcraft, yet it is also one of the most diverse and difficult to clearly define. For some people, witchcraft is a practice, a set of actions designed to create results, while for others, particularly within neo-paganism, witchcraft is a religion. Those who feel drawn to this practice or spirituality may think that it will be easy to learn about, and indeed there are a plethora of resources on the market for a seeker to learn from. However, it quickly becomes apparent that what seems like a simple thing to learn about is much more complicated. Modern witchcraft can be nebulous and hard to pin down, but it is also a deeply rewarding thing for those who find a home in it. The key, perhaps, is to be willing to learn about different kinds of witchcraft with an open mind. Modern witchcraft can be viewed as one path, and it is often discussed as such and forms one generally cohesive wider community. But, in the details, a person will find that it can vary greatly from one tradition to another, from one person to another, so that across the broad spectrum of modern witchcraft, there is a full array of different beliefs and practices within that wider community. I might suggest that in many ways, it is like a tree, where there are many branches, some growing closer together and some far apart, yet all are part of the same living, growing organism. Everyone who identifies as a witch belongs to this wider community, this tree, but our particular branches may be very far apart in many practical respects. When one is first seeking to understand what witchcraft is, it can be difficult to know where to start, simply because of this diversity. However, despite the range of specifics, there are some general things we can say about modern witchcraft as it is most often expressed across these different traditions. It is best to remember that there will always be exceptions, and that nothing here is meant to be definitive for all kinds of witchcraft. One of the most beautiful things about witchcraft today is its flexibility and diversity, because this allows people to find the exact set of beliefs and practices that work for them. Some might see this flexibility as a weakness, but the history of witchcraft seems to prove it is a strength. Certainly, it speaks to the viability of witchcraft, that it survived persecution and repression to grow from a small, obscure practice in the mid-20th century into the widespread and varied forms we see today. Perhaps the first and hardest question to answer when we are looking at what modern witchcraft is, is what is a witch? And here, we immediately come to an example of the diversity of the community, because there is no single answer. For some people, a witch is someone who practices magic. For others, a witch is someone who has been initiated into a specific witchcraft tradition or practice. While some may argue that a witch belongs to a specific tradition, but doesn't require initiation. For yet others, a witch is any person who declares themselves a witch whether or not they believe or practice anything specific. This may seem confusing, but it demonstrates the freedom that is inherent in modern witchcraft, where a person is not limited by other people's definitions unless they choose to be. A religious or spiritual aspect to witchcraft is one thread we often see shared among different modern witchcraft approaches. While there are some who take an atheistic or agnostic approach, the majority of modern witchcraft traditions and modern witches tend to approach their witchcraft from a deistic perspective. This can include monotheism, but most often is polytheism, often predicated on the worship of a specific set of deities. Probably the most common approach in modern neo-pagan witchcraft is to pair a god and goddess, sometimes with the goddess in the primary role, and have this pair as the main focus of worship. In theistic witchcraft, the deity or deities being honoured are the core of the belief system, and are also often vital to the magic being practised, being called on or evoked in spell work to empower the magic. There is no right or wrong to how divinity can be included in witchcraft, if it is even. And although the god and goddess combination is the most common, we also see people who focus exclusively on a single god or goddess, without denying the existence of other deities, or who include three or more deities in their worship. Some people don't have any set deities they honour, but rather may focus on a pantheon, 
but change who they are calling on at different times, and others choose a deity based on a specific need. There are probably as many ways to look at including spirituality in witchcraft as there are kinds of witchcraft. Another common theme of modern witchcraft is the celebration of holidays, particularly among those previously mentioned who take a strong theistic approach. Which holidays are celebrated will vary from one practice to another, however, in modern neo-pagan witchcraft, the wheel of the year is the template used by most. This system gives us a holiday roughly every six weeks, four based on astrological events and four based on older Irish fire festivals. The names of the holidays on this wheel will vary by group, so what follows is only the most commonly used names. In no way is this meant to imply that these are more genuine. By most reckonings, the old year ends and the new year begins at Samhain, on or around 31st of October. This is followed at the winter solstice by Yule, which acknowledges the longest night and shortest day of the year. After that, we move to Imbolc on the 1st of February, a celebration of the first stirring of spring, followed by Ostara at the spring equinox. These holidays comprise what is often considered the dark half of the year, or winter. Beyond this point, the wheel turns to the light half of the year, or summer. The light half begins at Beltana on the 1st of May, which is a celebration of the renewal of life, and usually has themes of fertility. On the summer solstice, there is Lita, or Midsummer, an acknowledgement of the longest day and shortest night. This is followed by Lunasa on the 1st of August, which is a celebration of the harvest. Then, on the autumn equinox, there is Mabon, the second harvest and the time to honour the balance between darkness and light. From this point, we have circled the entire wheel and come back again to Samhain, starting the cycle all over again. In addition to these solar holidays, most neo-pagan witches also celebrate the phases of the moon, particularly the full moon each month. For many neo-pagan witch traditions, the moon is seen as both a symbol of the goddess and of the witch's power symbolically, and the belief is that the full moon is the best time for all acts of magic. It is also seen as an ideal time for a variety of related activities, like charging crystals and tools, divination, and personal empowerment. Additionally, some will also acknowledge the Dark Moon, although that is not as common. Tools are another thing that can be found across the breadth of different witchcraft traditions, although, as with everything else, they can vary wildly. The concept behind a tool in witchcraft is that it is a physical object that contains or can be used to direct a witch's energy, usually for a magical working. For some traditions, the main tool will be the athame, or ritual knife. Although it is usually a double-sided blade in most traditions, it is not used to physically cut anything. Rather, this tool is symbolic of the witch's personal power and is used to direct energy during workings, as well as to store energy. In many cases, the ritual knife is black handled, and some groups require that the knife be made by the witch. Although in older traditions, the athame was supposed to be made from iron. In newer forms of witchcraft, athames can be stone, wood, or even ceramic, if that is what the witch prefers. Some witches favour using a wand more than a ritual blade, and wands can be made from many different kinds of wood, in whatever form the witch prefers. In modern witchcraft, people also choose to make wands from alternative materials, including crystal and metal. Another popular tool is the cauldron, which can be used for a variety of different purposes, including ritual and spell work, and is often used to represent the goddess. Beyond these three common tools, there are a wide variety of other tools a witch might choose to use or a tradition might require. Some stay simple and minimal, while others prefer quantity and variety. Ultimately, there is no right or wrong with a witch's tools, and modern witches seem eager to both stay traditional and also explore new and innovative options in working magic and practicing their religion. Tools are often kept on a witch's altar, but some may choose to store them safely away and only bring them out 
as needed. Witchcraft has always been a practice that can be isolating to those who follow it, and historically we see many witches who were individual practitioners, and while there are still solitary witches today, modern witches seem more drawn to community and interaction with others. Social media and technology are a different sort of tool of the modern witch allowing people who are physically or demographically isolated in their daily lives to connect with like-minded people around the world. In this aspect, more than any other, modern witchcraft is truly evolving from its historic roots and the internet has been probably the greatest impetus in the huge growth recently in the religion. People have an unprecedented access to information on witchcraft and the ability for anyone to share their own practices and beliefs has allowed for the prolification of modern tradition and practices. People who are isolated from other witches can still participate in the wider community and those who feel that one community doesn't quite suit them can look for another. This may not eradicate the loneliness caused by a lack of physical in-person associations, but it does help ease it. Online discussion forums and social media groups allow for people to reach out and talk to each other, to ask questions, to share information, and to discuss topics relating to witchcraft with people from many different backgrounds and traditions. There are options now for people to take classes online, to live chat with mentors, and we have even seen people coordinate magical workings and religious rituals across the globe using social media. YouTube has channels created by people seeking to share information or offering teaching videos. Technology has been a huge step forward in connecting modern witches to each other and in giving us a larger sense of community beyond the bounds of our own home or neighborhood. Magic is possibly the strongest link between different forms of modern witchcraft, although, as with everything else, it isn't ubiquitous. Magic in witchcraft can run the gamut from that based heavily on ceremonial magic to that which is rooted in folk magic, but the core concept is always the same. Magic in witchcraft is done with the intent to bring about change in some form or another. As Alistair Crowley explained it, magic is the science and art of causing change to occur in conformity with will. For witchcraft, magic can take many forms from structured spells to simple visualizations, all based on the idea of creating change aligned with the witch's will or intention. How complex or how straightforward the practice of magic itself will be will depend on the witch or tradition, but magic itself, both believing in it as a power and using it in one's life tend to be common basic concepts across different kinds of modern witchcraft. Witches work magic using herbs and oils, tools and candles, but the modern witch might also utilize meditation techniques and eastern healing modalities. The practice of magic, like witchcraft itself, has an endless number of expressions and styles, all of which can be found in modern witchcraft. Some will be based heavily or entirely in a specific culture and its folk magic. Others may be entirely intuitive and based on the individual witch's instincts and perceptions. Ultimately, witchcraft is a pragmatic path, whatever form it takes, and tends to focus on doing what works and repeating what has proven results. Modern technology has also blended with magic to move the modern witch into an entirely new and innovative realm of techno magic. A quick online search will show digital tarot decks, apps for oracles, and a plethora of witchcraft ebooks. There are even virtual covens and temples that people can join and participate in. As many of us become more and more focused on technology in our daily lives, we are finding ways to express our spirituality in that format and to practice our magic there as well. This is a general overview of modern witchcraft as it is most often practiced. It should be kept in mind of course that these are only generalities and a seeker will need to take time to explore specific traditions and paths to find the one that suits them best. There is no rigid orthodoxy or even orthopraxy within witchcraft. For every 10 witches who worship deities, there will be at least one who doesn't acknowledge them. For all those who follow the Wheel of the Year, there will be some who don't celebrate set holidays or who celebrate holidays based on a different culture or paradigm. For every dozen who practice magic, there may be one who sees it as superfluous to the witch's identity. 
To find one's place in modern witchcraft, ultimately, one must find one's own definition for what witchcraft is and how it is expressed and then seek to find the beliefs and practices most in line with that. Modern witchcraft is a beautiful and fulfilling practice for all those who choose to follow it. And because it has so many different possible expressions, there is a form of modern witchcraft to suit almost anyone. This has been just a small taste of what modern witchcraft is and can be in the world today. A quick overview of the larger things that can connect the wider community together. Beyond this though, each separate tradition and approach is worth learning about and considering because each adds something of value to witchcraft, both as a practice and religion. You can learn more about modern witchcraft and the contemporary development in this ancient craft with our book. What is modern witchcraft? With topics ranging from cyber witches to activism, from web weaving to urban witchcraft, from the arts to kitchen and solitary witchcraft and more. What is modern witchcraft? Considers contemporary developments in the ancient craft and discusses many questions and issues frequently raised today. It features authors such as Morgan Daimler, Annette George, Rachel Patterson, and so many more. It's available right now from Moonbooks Publishing. Thank you so much for watching. A special thank you to our members. You too can become a member and gain early access to videos just like this one. Subscribe for weekly videos, ring the bell to be notified of said videos, and we'll see you next time.